Hello everybody, welcome to another hour of miniature goodness and today we are doing WizKids miniatures. Um, I'll just check that the sound is working and everyone can hear me. Oh, awesome. Yes, uh, the last uh, the last uh, two times I've tried to log on now, I've, uh, it's been a complete failure. Um, let me say hello to people in chat before it goes up on... Sc oh, too late. <laughs> hello to Scorpler, uh, Mighty Lancer Games, Geek Curio, Tyson House, Michelle, Bull GM, Geek Curio, Tal. Dub, 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 dub. Hamish, hello, Goblin Squire. Um, I hope you're feeling a lot better, uh, Hamish. Um, okay, carry on on. Do Dover Cook. Wow, lots of you already. Now... Um, today we've got the B. Be be hang on, how do you say it? Froggy Moth. Froggy Moth. <laughs> Alfredi. And now I'm a bit confused with this one because lots of people are saying it's the Solar, and it could also be this one, the Plantair. So I, I mean, apart from him having hair, he looks more like this one than he does the Solar. So I don't know. What do you think? And Carlos, hello, Carlos. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to do wet blending on the frog he moth frog he moth I'm going to try and show you the skin tones quickly on the L3T and I'm going to show you how I paint the little wings on this one here now let me see if I can get the camera in the right position so you can see what I'm doing so what we're going to do is I'm going to put the base coat on the wings first and for the wings, because we want um, the white wings, we're going to use skeleton bone as our primer coat. Oh, look at all those people in chat. <laughs> all the goblins. All the goblins. <laughs> and Nafe's just come in. Hello, Nafe. So to start with, all we're doing is just getting some base colors down and like I said this is the skeleton bone and this is what we'll be using for our base color for the wings very very simple is that in focus is that focused there you go so what we'll do is because I've got the three models I can go back and forth between each model and while the paints drying on one I can move on to the next one and we'll do it like that if I do just one model I'll be waiting for paint to dry so it's best to get three or four models going at the same time uh, so we can get as much done in an hour as possible so it's just a nice even coat for your first initial layer painting um, white wings is super super easy um, it's just a layering effect with your different uh, layers of white it just getting brighter and brighter and then we use a nice little grey ink wash and then we go back over the grey ink wash with um, the whites again just the dry brush on the tops of the wings just to highlight them a little bit now with the WizKids miniatures they've all been pre-primed now normally I would like to prime my miniatures beforehand but as these are pre-primed miniatures, um, I, I'm trying to see how we get on without that primer coat to begin with. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but honestly, I prefer to add, add a primer coat to all my miniatures. It doesn't matter if they've been uh, sprayed with um, sealer or anything. It's, I prefer to add my own primer coat but today we're not doing that today we're going full on straight on to the miniature um, but like I say they have been primed so they say um, and I have removed some of the mold lines as well so there we are that's our wings so far very simple just got that base coat there. and we can work off that now uh, just let that dry. Now I've got my radiators on full blast again because it's been snowing today in Scotland. Yes, um, I, I, I totally agree, Michelle. I um, would strip the minis 
right down but what it is I'm just trying to um, show you um, a lot of people are buying the miniatures and they are supposed to be able to paint from the box so I have to kind of try and show that <laughs> even though I preferred to <laughs> spray them myself <laughs> I got myself a nice cup of coffee um, so I'm hoping everybody is well um, and like I say we've had our first real snow uh, in Scotland um, but it's not it's not brilliant um, I will tell you a little story though we got a neighbor a neighbor directly in front of me and he's one of these um, neighbors he polishes polishes his car at least three or four times a week he's a really really OCD type of guy you know is it OCD yeah I think it's OCD um, anyway there's a big his his driveway was all snow this morning so all morning all morning he was shoveling the snow off his driveway and he was there busy working and working and working and I said to Claire I said why is he doing that that snow's gonna melt by this afternoon and he's done all that work for nothing and what happens the snow melts so all morning he'd been shoveling snow just for it to melt by the afternoon <laughs> I was laughing <laughs> Okay, now we're going to start. <laughs> we're going to actually we'll actually move on to the Elfriti. Now, Elfriti, I don't know if you know this, but if you use a purple, if you use purple as your prime color, it looks re it works really nice for um, Elfriti. So, what you got here? Look, you've got your little cards. These are my little Dungeons and Dragons cards, which I use for reference. But what I'll do is we'll base coat all the skin purple with the primer. And then we'll dry brush on the red afterwards, and it gives a really nice effect. <laughs> and my D&D cards, I bought them for you for Christmas. <coughs> <laughs> I keep on, I keep on buying uh, Scorpler. Every Christmas, all the D&D &D cards they release, the monster cards. Um, and then Boxing Day, they go into my workshop. <laughs> because I love her. <laughs> I'm going to stop myself from laughing. Do you know, Carlos, I have never DM'd in my life. Never DM'd in my life. That is something, um, that is a skill to be a DM um, I've always been a player um, I would like to try and be a DM one day but it just scares the life out of me um, it, it looks anybody who is a DM in chat I know Tal is a DM uh, Carlos you've probably been a DM uh, Hamish and um, uh, if James is a DM as well um, it's a very very hard thing to do um, I don't know if I could uh, multitask at doing that at the same time. So we've got this lovely oh this this um this um this is Twilight Purple by MSP. Absolutely beautiful colour. And we're just gonna go over all the skin areas. And because we're doing the skin first, it's like I told you before, it doesn't matter if we make a mess on the rest of the miniature because we are going to be painting over all the other areas. So this is why we do things in a certain way. I mean, I'm getting this skin done. Um, if I make a mess on that rope there on this clothes, I'm going to be painting over anyway, so it doesn't matter. Everything has a place in painting. Uh, once you've worked it all out, it really is, it comes together nice and easy. I'm just getting this on. It's a nice, nice even coat of paint. And this purple is a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, and what we'll do is we'll start highlighting the skin with nice rich reds. Yeah. Welcome back Hamish. I was just um, talking about you saying that um, being a DM 
uh, must be a very hard thing to do. I think you've DM'd a few times, haven't you, Hamish? Um, Carlos was asking, have I been a DM before? And uh, no, I've never been a DM. Um, it scares me too much. Um, I would like to try it, but uh, I don't know. So all I'm doing is getting this purple on, just a quick rough job. And it doesn't matter because by the time it's finished, it'll all be beautiful and neat. All we're trying to do is get on that purple. And I'm trying not to miss out on any areas of skin because I don't want uh, Michelle shouting at me like last time saying you missed a bit. <laughs> you missed a bit. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yes, uh, Scorplet is amazing. But you are absolutely fantastic as well, Tal. You are absolutely amazing as well. No doubt about that. Um, Tal um, in chat, his um, games are very special because he's able to do a game that is theatre of the mind. Um, and I, I think if you can run a game where you are totally engrossed in that campaign with just the odd picture showing of like a castle or, you know, um, and the whole campaign is based around the theatre of the mind, what Tal is, is telling that story, but you get so engrossed in that story, um, it is just an, an amazing thing to be a part of. Um, Roll20 is fantastic for adding characters, but when you can actually play a game which is theatre of the mind, that's when you know, that's when you know you really, <laughs> that's, when... <laughs> that's when you, that's when you know you can DM, when you can keep a, a, a party totally engrossed in the adventure without any tokens, without anything, just a picture. Um, very, very clever thing to do. Um, hello, Mr. Perks. Got a little bit of a shakes going on my hands today. Maybe I have had one too many coffees. So what we have here is we have a nice purple primer, um, and that's all we need. Once that's dry, that'll t that'll stop being all glossy. So we'll just leave that go now. Um, I've probably missed a few little bits, but that's fine. What I'm trying to do today is show you how the purple works really well with the reds on top for that one. Okay. Yes, yes, Nafe, I've been watching your game with James. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right, okay, so this is this one's dry now. So what we're going to do is we'll do the frog a little bit later. I don't know what time, we're, how we're doing for time. Yeah, we're doing great. Um, so for the wings now, what we're going to do is we're going for some bleached linen, which is a more of a cream color. Um, and then we've got some dragon white. So again, very, very simple. going to do is there we are little dry brush tiny little dry brush I've got my tissue here and what we're going to do is start working in the lighter cream and we're just going to go quite heavily over the top leaving the ends there there we go
So leaving just in, in these pieces here, they'll be the darkest areas and I'm going to make it lighter going towards the end of each wing. So all I'm doing is dry brushing inside and going out towards the tips of the wings. Now you're not going to see much at the minute. Um, let's see if we can show you better on the back. Once I add that white, that'll be even brighter then. Well, we're just quickly going over the wings here, leaving the top part the darkest, and we're bringing that paint across and down, and just making it lighter as we go, just by dry brushing it on. And what I'll do is I'll start adding some white. This will really start bringing out the brightness. There we go. Don't know if you can see that. It's a bit difficult. White is a very hard colour for me to show uh, because of my lamps. It reflects the light off the white. So you're not actually getting a true image of what's happening on screen here. Um, so I'll just quickly rush through this and um, we can move on to something else because you can't really see it too well. Okay, that's better. I'm just making it lighter and lighter and mixing in the white with the cream and just going to the tips of the wings, we got the last white. There we are. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, okay. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back for that one. Um, what I'll do once that one's dry, we just add a grey ink wash to that. So let's let's crack on with our froggy then. Hello Dawn, I got coffee. I had, um I got the coffee made just before the stream this time because last time I drank my coffee in the stream and it was frozen and then they spat it everywhere. It's awful. Okay, the frog he moth. Frog he moth. What we're going to do today is nice dark colours, working from dark green to light green to yellow. So what we got here is we have some mossy green, we have some naga green, and we have some mustard yellow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the dark green all over the back of the frog, and then I'm going to wet blend in the lighter greens, and then it's going to work out so it'll be yellow underneath and hopefully going along some of his little tentacly things and that'll be very very nice so we'll try that I'll get some room here so I'll start off with a nice dark colour just fill up my palette with paint There we go. This is a beautiful miniature. Very nice. And we've got some light green there. Might need a bit more. And what we'll do is we'll just add some of that mustard yellow as well. Why can't we have a purple frog? And see, everything would be purple if Claire had a way. <laughs> Thank you, Hamish. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, you use, even when you use your pokey stick, the paint doesn't want to come out of your pots. Come on. Got more coming out on my fingers than I have on the pot. There we go. There we go. We'll try that. Hello, Muses Touch. <laughs> Everything should be purple. 
Okay, again we're going for a nice large brush. Now this is wet blending, so it's a very fast, easy thing to do. Um, what we're going to do is we're going straight into the dark green, and we're going to fly onto the miniature with a nice, nice lot of green going around. Now, like I say, it's going to, might be a bit difficult today because I haven't given this miniature a lighter undercoat. Um, I'm just using what is with the um, what's on the miniature, which is um, I think it's a, a used to be a Vileco, used to be a Vileco primer, but I've I've been told it's all been changed now. So we're just going there. What we can do now is start adding some dark green on top. Actually, let's get on the top. Let me see if I can get this better picture for you. It's quite a big mini. Now the idea is to make your whole frog kind of painted in one session where we start now adding some lighter green to the darker green and we're going to start working that in to the paint so that it goes to a lighter shade. So we've got 50-50 now of the Naga green and that dark green. And we're letting the paint do the work. Again, 50-50 of the two greens. And we're just working our way around the paint all around. Now my room is very hot today, so it could end up a complete nightmare. Um, but so far so good um, all we're doing is blending in the dark green into the lighter green and we just keep on going round and round where we've gone it's quite a vast thing so I'm afraid I can't look up in the chat at the minute this is well I can hello <laughs> we're just gonna keep on adding that green and making it lighter and lighter So what I want is it to I want it to become yellow on the underbelly of the frog. Let's see if we can blend that in a little bit better. It's just pushing the paint into the lighter paint to darken it off. Again, not so much dark now, we're going more and more lighter. Now it doesn't really matter with this frog because I'm trying to get to a yellow point. Um, normally if I was going to the bottom of the frog I would make it darker. But what we're trying to do is I want to have a yellow front to the frog. So I'm trying to get to um, a lighter point to start blending the yellow into the green. And as you can see, it's starting to go from dark to lighter now already. You can see it working. Now the back of these tentacles I'm going to keep dark, so we'll go back to the dark and we'll work our way around. I might have to go over the actual dark area again afterwards, um, give it a two coat 
but uh, to be honest it's not looking too bad so far so I'm just going here and I'm going to start adding the lighter effects going down I'm just pushing that paint paint down with my brush and just add a little bit more lighter to it so we're just getting a lighter effect going around all the way around those little tentacles and the same here there we are. and just there like I said my room is very hot today so my paint is drying out quite fast yeah, but actually it's actually not too bad so far you've got the nice dark effect going around to the light so I hope you can all see that so it's going from dark to light around the miniature but what we want is the top of the um, these tentacles here to be more darker on the back here so we'll keep on adding here there we are get some nice paint on there And again, going back into that lighter green and just pushing it down. Going back into the dark green, just to go around here. Back into the light green. Yeah, I've got to be quick here because it's going to start drying out and I won't be able to blend in that yellow. I uh, need to speed up a little bit. Okay, let's go into that yellow, shall we? Right, let's add some more paint there. If we get the same colour, we'll, we'll be fine. So we'll just work out the same colour and get it nice and wet there. And we shall do the same on the other side. And we'll move that green down. There we are. And we can start adding a little bit of yellow to that green, the lighter green. And we're just gonna blend that in nicely with that green looks beautiful already and again blending that in on our palette giving a nice 50 50 of that green and we'll work away from the bottom and we're just mixing in with the green i actually need a bit more green there so we just add some more green going back into the yellow adding a bit more green 50 50 with both the mixes and we just pull in that yellow up and around now we're going back into the yellow. Now we're just adding more yellow to that green that's on my palette. And we'll just make it brighter and brighter now, moving up the throat of the little froggy. A happy little frog. And again, going back into the yellow. We're less and less green on the brush now. And we're just blending that yellow to make it brighter and brighter going up the throat of the frog. I'm not worried about getting any paint on the mouth, that's all going to be painted red anyway. So we're just working our way all the way to the top. So the top of the mouth here will be the brightest part and that will be almost pure mustard yellow. So there we got that nice green shade going up the throat of the frog. And we're going to try and work our way around the rest of the miniature now. Whew. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm going to carry on uh, because I want to keep this going while the paint is still wet. And once again, we're going back into that darker green and we're going to start working our way down this tentacle here. And just moving away all the way around. Now the miniatures always look nicer when you've got some blending going. Um, it does take a little bit of practice there's no doubt about that but um, once you've uh, started to get into wet blending um, it is a fantastic and it is really good fun to do as well. It's quite difficult on a live stream <laughs> but um, when you're in the house and nobody's watching you can actually really really have a good time um, it is a lot of fun and it makes such a difference to the miniature um, I painted some miniatures the other day and um, added some nice blue wet blending and it just made the miniature look absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and all we're doing is that all you need is your dark green a light green and all you're doing is adding the colors together slowly which gives you a whole range of greens um, you've got a whole palette of greens practically at your disposal by wet blending by just using a dark and a light green Makes you wonder why I got 10,000 colours, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, we start to do the big frog's thighs. So again, we're going dark on the top and we'll work our way down with the lighter greens. Actually, we need to finish underneath here. So we're just at the bottom of these tentacles here, and we're just making them ultra light, like you'd see on a fish, where the fish belly is lighter and the the top of the fish is always darker. Just again blending in, making it lighter just by adding a lighter colour. So it's 50 50 now again with the greens, and we'll move down the legs. And when we get to the actual toes of the frog, we'll start lightening it up again. When you paint um, doing wet blending, you don't need to add an ink wash either to your work because you're doing all the shades and you're doing everything by... Thank you for subscribing, Smithy1. Um, once, once you've um, added all the different shades from your different colours, um, it actually, you, there's no need for an ink wash um, because you've already added all those different shades yourself um, you can still add an ink wash if you wanted to of course there's no 
no stopping you but it means you don't have to there's a you've got a choice um, I mean I absolutely love adding ink wash to all my miniatures uh, but when you do something like this you don't need that ink wash because as you can see just by looking around the miniature you've got your dark colors there I have to go over the back again because it's uh, it needs another coat on the back there it's got a, the undercoat is coming through but that's not a problem the rest of the miniature is fine but I'm just waiting for that to dry and then I can go back over the dark areas once more I'm glad the sound is working okay um, it is absolutely nightmarish when the sound doesn't work um, let's show you what I'm going to do with the toes now with the toes I'm doing the same that I'm doing with the throat there I've started adding a little bit of yellow to that green so what I want is the ends of those toes to have a nice yellow and still slightly green but I want them to be more yellowish So we've got a nice little wet blend of green and yellow going to the ends of the toes. It's very simple and easy to do. As you can see, that's all done. So you've got the nice dark greens going into your light greens onto the webbed feet there. And again, going to the back of the feet, we we'll keep some dark going. And um, we we'll just add that to the back. And we're going back into the light green. And we're just finishing off this little tentacle here. underneath here so as you can see it's coming on absolutely lovely what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go back over that black there thank you for subscribing Corey So I'm going back over the initial part here because you can see it's quite scratchy with the paint. Um, so what I'm going to do is do an initial paint there. I'm just going to go over a little bit on the back there. And we're just going to cover those nasty little scratches um, from where the paint is a little bit too thin. And the undercoat from the miniature is showing through. But what we're just on the slight part, we're not, we don't want to go over the parts we've painted and actually blend it in so it's just the highest parts um, that we can just see where the where the undercoat is showing through and this and this is the reason why this is the reason why and it's a perfect example why I undercoat all my miniatures even if they say they have been pre-primed because this happens and that is that undercoat is coming through my top coat um, uh, because I haven't got my color that I wanted to initially start with um, um, so that's why I do undercoat all my miniatures it actually works in your favor um, if you're doing like goblins and things like that I always start with a brown undercoat um, white is good for all sorts of things um, but some undercoats you've got to just be careful because um, the paint will show through but saying that this miniature is absolutely coming on lovely I'm quite happy with this so far there's lots of some nice variations in color there you can see the tones are going around from dark to light and that is what I wanted I wanted the black on the back black I wanted the dark green on the back going round to that light on the front and I've achieved that so job done 
on a live stream. <laughs> Did you hear my cat? My my my, my we got we got a, a crazy cat. We got an absolute crazy cat called Millie, and she just meows, 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 meows. Right, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to just check the time. Yeah, right. I'm going to leave that there for now because you can see what I've done there. Um, there's no point in me showing you more of this one because it's going to be the same on the other side. And like I say, we've only got an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into the Afri tea and I'm going to start dry brushing some reds on there for you. Now all the miniatures I will finish um, and I'll do a, a 360 video on YouTube uh, for you all to see the finished miniatures. Um, but of course um, I do love showing you little hints and tips on what I'm doing with the miniature. Actually I'll show you the wings on this one first. <laughs> I get very involved in my miniatures. Now, these, this, this, the wings here, as you can see, I've got the dark going from lighter to lighter. It's not showing up too well on the camera, and I do apologize for that. Um, maybe in the future, I will get a more expensive setup. At the minute, I'm just using webcam cameras. Um, I don't know what the best are. I'm still a noob to do with video. But let's carry on with this one. This is gray. Ink wash is a pale grey ink wash from Valleco. It's absolutely spot on, absolutely amazing. If you're doing anything with white, um, this is the ink wash for you. Um, a lot of people use uh, use a black ink wash on white, and it looks awful. It looks absolutely horrendous. It's too dark. It's too dark. Um, but this is a very very mild highlight. Of grey so all we do it's an absolutely beautiful thing to add because what will happen it'll go into all the recesses of that miniature we we'll just push it along dip, 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 dip. but what it is because it's grey and ink wash it's not um, too dark so we just go over like this over our little wings <clears throat> Excuse me. Like so. I don't know if you can see that okay. <laughs> I love it that you're talking D&D &D in chat there. <laughs> And that's the thing about actually when you're painting WizKids miniatures, it, um, they are you know they are Dungeons and Dragons, they are you know, Pathfinder, they are Magic the Gathering, they they are all the brands that you know and love. Um, so when you actually paint these miniatures, um, you kind of already got an idea what they look what they look like, the colours. I mean, you can buy all these little cards. For Dungeons and Dragons to see all the miniatures, and I've said this before, um, I, I, I do pinch Scorpius monster cards, um, but it is so much fun when you've got reference material for your miniatures and you can see all the different colours. It gives you something to work from, um, and it's just fantastic. Okay, so that ink is on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove some of the ink while it's still wet using some cotton buds. These are my little cotton buds um, or baby buds. Oh, I, I never know. All I know is I stick these in my ears to get the, the Shrek wax out. <laughs> so what we're going to do is just remove excess paint and it also helps highlight the ends of the wings by just using this little cotton bud to remove the excess Ink wash. And then once that's dry, we just dry brush that white back over the tips of the wings and it just gives a fantastic effect. But you've still got that grey ink wash which is giving you the highlights from the wings. And that just works a treat. There we are. 
absolutely gorgeous. This is a absolute. This this is actually a really really nice sculpt. I don't know if you can see this too well, but the muscle tone on this guy there, that it's an absolutely beautiful sculpt for his chest, and it, it looks it's a really really good sculpt. Okay, let's go and move on to our Ifriti. Now, this is our little card from the Dungeons and Dragons monster card set. And you can see it's already got a kind of a purpley effect going to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start drying, brushing some reds over the skin, a nice heavy dry brush over the skin. And we should start getting the same effect as what we can see there on the card. Yeah, thanks Ty. It, um, there's lots of little things you can do to make your miniatures look fantastic just by the minimal amount of work. And this is what my channel is about. It's not about painting the best miniature possible. It's about hints and tips on how to make a, a tabletop standard miniature for gaming um, in the fastest possible way using the simplest techniques I possibly can show you. Okay, let's get on with some reds. So let me find my red. Blah, 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 blah. I did have some red earlier. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, excuse me, I'm reaching across here. And again, I'm reaching across there, showing you, showing you my hairy armpits. So, excuse, excuse me for that. <laughs> hairy armpits. Right, what we've got here is some gory red. Now we're starting off with a dark red. Again, we're starting off the dark and we're moving and we're moving with some nice holly berry. This is from one of the Christmas sets from uh, the MSP line of paint. <laughs> right. That's a beautiful red, absolutely gory red, beautiful red. Okay, we're nearly there. There we go, a little bit of red. See, I just wasted my paint, put so much on the palette. Okay, and once again, we've got these little fluffy little brushes. Now, I've said every, every, every time I use these brushes, I keep on saying the same thing. So I'm not going to say it this week. <laughs> um, and of course, you can buy all these items from Mighty Lancer Games in the UK. Um, all the paints, and all the brushes, everything I'm using here today, including the WizKids miniatures, um, Mighty Lancer Games has an absolutely huge, huge warehouse. I, I'm going to call it a warehouse. It's, it's, a, it's a store the size of a small football stadium, um, but they, they have all the WizKids minis. And of course, if you become a patron of mine, not only do you join the um, Goblin Army, and you can go onto my Discord channel, and we have hundreds of goblins there, and we have games, we have Play Conan, we've got a chess club, uh, we have all our videos and trick streams all linked together, and it's a private server, so you never you never kind of... There's no strangers coming in giving you a hard time. Everybody is a family in there, um, so it's totally worth doing. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> if you join my Patreon, you also get 10% off Mighty Lancer Games products, all their products. Um, and, of course, that is a huge saving. Um, you, you'll, you'll be, you're supporting me, of course, but you're also supporting a small business, which is Mighty Lancer Games. Okay. Let's carry on. Uh, let's just get this dry brushed. So again, working on purple, we are starting with that beautiful dark red. I'm taking the paint off because this is a dry brush, and I'm going to stipple the paint onto the demon or the freaky, and it's going to look absolutely gorgeous within seconds, just on the skin there. Just work away, nice. Nice and quite heavy the first time. That purple will just come through as a shade, which is absolutely gorgeous. And like I said before, it doesn't matter if you go over the rest of the miniature, 
This is why we do the skin first because we're going to paint over the rest of the miniature later. What we're trying to do is get all this dry brushing, get all the skin done and that means that you can take your time painting the sword and the clothes and all the fine details but you're not going to make a mess because you've already done the part that is messiest. I'm just working our way around. That purple works really well as a base coat for your demons. Um, it gives a lovely shadow uh, come through on the skin. Um, and it's just the right color that works for the reds. Now it's quite tricky here because the sword's in the way so I've got to try and Squeeze in my little brush there. There we go. Okay, and you can see the purple is working with that red already. So I'll leave that dry a little bit. Just trying to cover the whole miniature. I'm going to have to work on the front of the chest after the show because I can't get in there at the minute so I'm just gonna wash my brush and we're gonna go on to the lighter reds yes it works nice yes purple and red actually works together like cheese and biscuits <laughs> Okay, we're going on to the lighter red, and again, this time we're going quite lightly. Um, it'd be easy to show you on the back, and just a little bit on the back there, and we're just highlighting the muscle tones. And again, the purple is working beautiful. Uh, once the paint is dried as well, you'll find it all blends in absolutely gorgeous. And that's the other thing with painting as well. Um, the fun of painting miniatures is the experimentation, of course. I mean, it's all good and well watching me paint miniatures. Uh, but it's also good fun for yourselves in the house to try different color combos. Um, and you're, you might surprise yourself what works really well um, on a miniature. I mean, everything I do, um, half of it, is just by years and years and years of painting um, I mean I never had all the YouTube videos to learn how to paint when I was a kid um, I mean I, I started uh, way back in the early 80s um, and we had nothing all we had was the the magazines uh, now you got YouTube and Twitch and everything to watch and learn from uh, but back then we didn't even have we didn't even have the ink washers um, for an ink wash back in the very early 80s I used to use dirty dirty water I used to use very very dirty brown water or black water as my ink washes uh, because they didn't actually make them back then that, not that I can remember So we're just finishing off this absolutely beautiful looking skin tone. And it's a very simple thing. We've got the three tones there. We've got the purple, dark red and the lighter red. And it just works really well for this miniature. Once that's dry, we can actually go one step further and we can actually add another lighter red on top.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just finish off the wings on this little guy here. We'll just put a little bit of white on the wings and then I'll say goodnight and I'll take my little doggy for her walkies. And if nobody knows, I have a Jack Russell. I have a beautiful Jack Russell and she is coming on for nine years old now. Um, and she is my whole world. She's an absolutely angel of a little doggy. Yes, yes Dawn, yes, orange is an absolutely perfect colour. Orange would work very, very well on this one too. Um, you could definitely, definitely finish that off with a beautiful orange. That would look absolutely stunning. Yeah. Okay, so for the last little item for today, we're just going to add a little bit of a dry brush to the tips of the wings on this miniature. Um, and that's just to finish this off. And we are all done. I don't know if you can see it too well with the camera. White is not good, like I said before, to show you techniques uh, with my setup. What happens is my light here, as you can see, is reflecting off my hat. If anything that's white, it just reflects. It's awful. I don't know how to fix that. So if anybody, any of my goblins knows how to fix a, a, a light source to stop it glaring or reflecting, sorry, while I'm filming, I would be most most uh, welcome to know. All you tech 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 heads. <laughs> there we are. So we're just simply going around the bottom of the wings. And because we've already got that grey on the wings, all we're doing is adding a nice little finishing touch for a very simple paint, but it just it just looks fantastic once it's done. I don't know if you can see that too well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is anyway, I'll take photographs of everything, but I really do need to work out how I can um, film white. Uh, because white is a very important colour to learn how to paint. And I know for many of you, white is one of the hardest colours to paint and make it look effective. I mean, Gandalf the Grey, for example, or Gandalf the White. Um, I remember when I was doing him years and years and years and years ago. It took me so many tries to work out what was the best method to get him painted. So there we are. Um, thank you everybody for popping onto this show. Um, it's nice to be back after a few days, a few, t few missed opportunities. Um, I will say goodnight to every single one of you. Thank you so much for popping on and supporting me. Um, take care out there in the snow and you know, stay safe. And I will say love to everybody and good night.